Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you how I made these Adirondack chairs. One folds up and the other is permanently fixed in place. Let me know which option you like best. Before I begin, I want to give a shout out to Manny's Book Dragon for creating her own version of a coffin for my coffin tutorial. It has cushioning on the inside, how awesome is that? She also made several crates for my wooden crate tutorial. Thank you so much, your creations mean so much to me. Now let's find out how I made these chairs. I drew out my dimensions on graph paper after converting a few major measurements from 1-1 scale to 1-24 scale. I mostly used skinny sticks for this project, but I also used a couple of popsicle sticks and a few pieces of dowel rod for bolts on the foldable chair. Mark off the length of the back slats using the tallest slat as a guide and give a little extra for the filing down later. I cut out 7 for each chair. I made a master slat that I used to trace and taper the rest of the pieces. I then marked off and cut out 8 slots for the seat the same way. Measure and cut off 2 pieces for the armrests using the curved end of the skinny stick as part of the design. Because I made 2 different chairs, I cut out 4 pieces and filed them down together with a clamp to hold them in place. Using a regular popsicle stick, I trimmed off one of the long sides and traced the shape of the seat supports. I made four of these for both chairs, so I filed them down together the same way as the armrests. After the seat supports, I cut out two front leg supports, one for each chair, just like the seat slats, only slightly longer. Next, I cut out the two arch supports on the back of the chair that hold the back slats together. Find the center of your arches and file the pieces until you get the look you need. There's a long and short arch for each chair. The two different sizes are what give the chair its fan design. I made two tiny L-shaped locking mechanisms, one millimeter in diameter, for the interactive chair. These hold the back piece in place after it's been unfolded. The added hinges, locks, and other small parts will all make sense as the foldable chair gets assembled. Okay, now let's assemble all these pieces. Glue the seat pieces together, making sure the side supports are evenly spaced. I drew a parallelogram on my working surface to ensure symmetry. File away any protruding edges and we've got our seat and back legs! Take those two arch supports from earlier and find their middles. Glue on the tapered back slats with suitable spacing between each other. I changed my design of the back supports with one tilted further inward. This will let the back piece rest farther back when placed with locks later. Draw out the shape you want your back piece to have and file it down on top and bottom. It looks much better. You can see here how the slanted arch support allows the back piece to lie further back. It was a good idea to change the design last minute. I drilled 1mm holes in small rectangular blocks to house the locks that will hold the back piece in place. With the back piece temporarily set onto the seat, glue on the rectangular blocks on each side to keep the back piece in position. Continuing on, I drilled a 1mm hole on each side of the seat with my pin vise. The leg pieces are the same length and width as the seat slats, but filed down at an angle on the ends. They need 1mm holes drilled into them as well. I filed down a long 1mm dowel to use in the 6 total hinges needed for the foldable chair. Along with the dowel, I also cut off 6 bolts from a cylinder with a 1mm hole drilled in the center of it. Cut off the proper size dowel and bolt and glue the outsides together so the legs move freely from the inside. With the legs added, we need to attach the leg support. And as usual, I must make last minute design changes. I added grooves into the sides of the seat so the future leg support can fit snug as the chair folds in on itself. I glued the support while it was nestled in its newly formed groove. It worked perfectly. I sanded down the bottom of the legs so everything would sit flat. Again, I changed my own design so the armrest could sit flat against the seat when folded. I tried to show you as best I could, so hopefully it makes sense. Now 
Now add the last two hinges that attach the armrests to the back piece. I kept the foldable chair its original beige color so you could see its features, but I did want to show you different color varieties so I stained the other chair with red mahogany wood stain. The stationary chair is an easier version of the foldable chair with all the big pieces having the same dimensions. All you need to do is glue them together. Ah, the completed projects. It feels good when you're done, I must admit. I like the natural beige color with the interactivity of the folding chair, but the permanent structure of the darker chair makes it more sturdy and reliable. If you have any suggestions for miniatures, I'd love to hear about them in the comment section. And if you make anything, I'd love to see it. Follow and tag me on Instagram with a picture of your miniature and I might give you a shout out on my next video. Thank you for watching, you'll see me soon.